Hey guys, welcome back to the new studio. This is a very temporary filming background situation, but don't worry, I'm working on it. I need to get some covers and some lights. And speaking of lights, we are talking all about continuous light today. So I often get asked, what continuous light should I buy for food photography? And today I have a really great affordable option to show you. When it comes to LED continuous lights, there's a lot of questions around which one is the best to get. And there really is no answer to which one is the best. And there's a lot of things that might factor into what might be the right light for you, such as brightness, bicolor or daylight balanced, budget, all sorts of things. But today I wanna to show you this new light from Sure, which is the C60 LED that they have kindly sent me to try out and review. This is not a sponsored video. I'm not being paid by them to say anything. They haven't told me what to say. They're not seeing this video before it goes up. So this is my honest review and I wanna show you the pros and cons of this light today. So let me tell you a little bit more about this light before we put it through its paces in a test shoot. This is a 60 watt light, which is pretty bright for the size. At 100%, it translates to around 3000 lumens at one meter distance, which is pretty bright. It has a CRI rating of 96, which is great for an LED light to get a good quality of color. This is a daylight balanced light, so you can't change the color temperature. It is set at 5000. 600 kelvins which for most food photography and video is ideal anyway the c60 light can be powered by mains or batteries so if you need to use it in a wireless situation it does have a slot on top to take two batteries you can also control the light through the sure light app and it has bluetooth control up to about 15 meters which is pretty far i've never been in a situation where i've needed to be further than that from a light but if you are, then maybe this Bluetooth operation is not ideal for you. Okay, so I'm quickly gonna show you how easy it is to connect to the app. So I've gone ahead and turned the light on. I'm just gonna make sure Bluetooth is on. It is, if it isn't, you just press and hold the set button for a couple of seconds and it's gonna come on. So now I'm just gonna open the Sure Light app and you'll see here that any lights that are currently on and available are gonna come here. So this is the top one. And then here you can see, I can literally slide it and change the temperature. Or there's a few preset ones as well, 25%, 50%, 100%. It's super easy. You can also cycle through all the effects here. So for example, let's take the TV effect and you can change the rate and also the brightness of that effect in here as well. So that could be something interesting if that's what you wanna do. Yeah, it's super easy. Out of the box, this light comes with the light itself, a reflector head, this little sort of neck stand, which allows you to tilt the light up and down, a bag and the power cable. The light attachment is a Bowens S-mount, which is extremely standard. So it's really easy to use with lots of third party modifiers. All of my modifiers are already Bowens mount. I always make a point to buy those because it's what my attachments take, but it's an extremely standard attachment so more than likely, if you've already got some modifiers, they're probably already gonna fit on this. So straight out of the box, the first thing I noticed, this thing is compact and it's light as well. It is literally handheld size. Like I did not expect it to be this small. So if you're shooting in a small studio or you don't have a lot of storage space, you could literally throw this thing in a drawer and it's stored away. If anything, the bag it comes with makes it much bigger and bulkier. So I would probably just store it in a drawer or a cupboard on its own. In terms of build quality, things that I noticed straight out of the box, it is a very plasticky design, but that's fully expected for this price point. The neck itself that it attaches to to articulate is a little bit flimsy and a little bit difficult to use. The clip, the way it sort of comes around, it does kind of bump the light sometimes, so it can be easier to sort of take the light off get the angle you want and then put the light on, which is kind of annoying, but 
it's also not the end of the world. The reflector head is nice. It is quite on the small side, but it does do the job. It gets that light pointing forwards and bouncing around a little bit. This light is gonna retail for $199, which is super budget friendly for an LED continuous light. There is a bi-color version as well, which is $50 more expensive. So for $249, you can essentially get the same thing with an adjustable color temperature as well. So before we decide if this could be an ideal light for you, let's put it to the test in a food photography video shoot. Okay, so this is the setup that I've got going on for this reel. I've kept it really simple. So I've put the LED light in my 60 by 90 softbox and I've tilted it so that it's the long side is horizontal because I really wanna create a light that looks like a natural bright window light. So I've got that running here. I've elevated it a bit above the scene and angled it just slightly downwards, just so that the dough that's inside the bowl can really get a lot of light on the top. I've got the light on a power of 60% and that's, I'm pretty impressed to be honest. I wasn't sure if I was gonna have to put this on sort of nearly 100% to get a light bright enough for a video. But my camera settings are a shutter speed of 1 60th aperture of 3.2 and an ISO of 100. So really even with those settings, keeping my ISO at 100, I've still been able to keep the light on 60%. So that's really nice. I've got two cameras set up. I've got one up here with a 35 millimeter lens, which you can't see because I'm filming on it right now, but 35 millimeters straight down. And then the camera that I'm filming from right now, I'm using with my 90 millimeter macro lens as a second angle. So you'll see when I edit the clip together, that just gives it a bit of variation and allows me to pick the best shot to show what I'm doing at the time, whether that's from above or in front. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep filming. This process is gonna take quite a few hours. So let's go. Okay, the video clips are done. I've taken out my contact lenses because my eyes are like sandpaper. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna take a couple of photos for the thumbnails. Okay, so I've got the pictures that I need. My wireless mic has run out of battery. So I'm gonna clean up, get some things on charge, and then I'll be back in a minute to give you my full thoughts on this light. Okay, so I've had a chance to do a full shoot. I've done a video shoot and a photo shoot with this, and I'll post the results of that at the end of this video. Overall, I am really impressed with this light. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't think it's better than my Godox, but for $199, I'm not expecting it to be. What I do want it to be is consistent, quiet, and generally reliable. And I really found it was all of those things. This thing is silent. Let me go right up close with it on and tell me if you can hear it because I really can't. And for me, that's something that is really important while I'm filming a video. I don't want any unnecessary noise. And even some of the more expensive LED lights I've used, like the Pixapro ones, they do have a bit of a fan sound. So having something silent is a really, really nice feature. I was also really impressed with the output brightness that this light gave me. I only had to use it on 60% to keep my ISO at 100 during my video shoot. So that gives me a lot of flexibility to move the light further away and then be able to turn up the brightness to compensate for that exposure if I was in a situation where I needed to. I also think that it would work well through two layers of diffusion. So I only used it inside one softbox, but I think you could probably double diffuse it and have enough brightness to play with. I kept my white balance set at Kelvin value of 5,600 and just left the light on just to see how the colors render. And to be honest, it's really good. 
I didn't need to make any color temperature changes in post-production. I just kind of played around with it for style preference. The shoot I did went on for about four and a half hours, maybe five hours all in all. Making bread is a long process. So this thing was on for hours. And let me tell you, by the end of it, it was still cool to touch. And that is really nice as well. Now, lights can get extremely hot, but this one just kept its cool the whole time, which is really nice because it's not adding any unnecessary heat to the studio. And it generally is just running really well. I didn't experience any flickering, which I have had on LED continuous lights in the past. So again, for a light in this budget, that is really impressive. It does also come with a bunch of special effects settings, certainly for food photography. This is not something you're gonna need, but it's there, so if you find a situation where you wanna use one, then tag me in the video because I would be interested to see that. Overall, I would highly recommend this light. If you're just starting out with artificial light and you wanna give continuous light a go, or if you wanna get into making food videos, it's an extremely affordable option that for the price gives you a really good quality. And then over time, as you get more confident and you know what you need out of a light that maybe you need more power or something like that, then you can look to upgrade. But I really think if you get this, it's gonna last you a long time. So check the link down in the description to order this light. It's being released today as this video is going up. As I said, I really rate it and thank you to Sure for letting me try it out. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you found it useful and found another little piece of equipment that you might like to add to your kit. So before I go, don't forget to hit subscribe and like this video if you did. And if you're interested to stick around and see the final video, we're gonna play that now. Let's make my favorite overnight bread together. Full recipes in the description. Start by making your poulish, mixing together flour, water, and yeast, giving it a good stir and leaving it for 12 to 15 hours until it looks like this. Next, add water and your poulish to a bowl. Give it a good mix to evenly distribute it and add some yeast and stir again. We're gonna be using 13% protein content flour, add some salt, and then give it a good squish with your hands until everything's combined. Next, start your stretch and folds. A full description of this is in the description box. Give it a good flip, leave it in a bowl and let it rest for 15 minutes, repeating this a total of four times with a final 60 minute rest. After that, flour a surface and give your dough a pre-shape and then let it rest for 15 minutes while you dust your banneton with some rice flour. Do your final shape and pop it in the banneton and pull the sides together to seal. The dough is gonna rest in the banneton for another 60 minutes. Score, bake, and enjoy.